Hello, this is my video on cross-country flight planning, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, why do we do cross-country flight planning to begin with? Well, the reason we do that is for fuel conservation. You want to make sure that you have the fuel to get where you're going. It may seem like it's a pretty easy thing to think about, but as your destination get further and further away and the checkpoints get, further, um, get less distance between them, you want to make sure that you have the fuel to get to where you're going. So, how do you know when you do need a flight plan? Well, for the purposes of logging cross country, any distance that you do greater than 50 nautical miles straight line distance is considered a cross country. And a lot of times in your training, the instructor may have you do a cross country flight plan for a destination that's about 80 or 90 or maybe even 100 nautical miles away. So let's just go ahead and start with the basics here. Okay, now what I have here is I have a map of Houston, Texas, and this is the state of Houston, uh, which is also my hometown, and I'll just go ahead and zoom out and see that we are located in the southeast portion of the United States. There is the Texas Gulf Coast right there, which has been the source of a lot of news lately, but that's a whole other matter altogether. Okay, now let's say, for example, I was in an aircraft, and I wanted to go from, let's say, this airport right here to another smaller airport that's right here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make a little path right there. So I'm just going to go from here to this airport right here. And actually, I think it's actually up here. Okay, so what we can see is that this distance right here is approximately, and I'll go ahead and change it, approximately 17 nautical miles on a heading of 248 degrees and I'll go ahead and round that up to 249 degrees so will we need a flight plan to get there well probably not because we have a pretty good idea that it's here this is our des this is our starting point this is our destination and we have a pretty good idea where the airports at we know that if we head in a distance of approximately southwest for about 20 nautical miles we'll find it also, there's a lot of landmarks that we can use. We can use this highway that's crossing up right here. We got another major highway right there. And let's not forget that the city of Houston is right there. So when we start out, we're on the right side, and then we get down to the left side, then that's probably where our airport's going to be at. So in this case, we probably would not need a flight plan because there's really only one point here. We have a pretty good idea where we're going, and we definitely know that we have the fuel to get there. So what this type of flying is called, it's called pilotage. And all it is, it's flying by known geographical landmarks. It doesn't take any type of flight plan or calculation or any type of uh, shooting the numbers, if you will, to get to where you're going. Now when you do do a flight plan, that's another type of navigation that's known as dead reckoning. And all dead reckoning is, it's the process of flying from one point to the other, um, by reference of speed and checkpoints and uh, basically time distance figures. So that's what we'll talk about with filling out a flight plan right there. Okay, so first of all, so let's say we did want to apply a plan of flight. How would we go about it? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to pick your beginning point, which in this case, we'll go ahead and stick with here. This airport, by the way, is Ellington Field, which is actually one of the more popular airports I'd like to fly into. And then let's say I want to fly down to Galveston, which is down here. Well, first thing we would have to do is we would have to plot out what is our azimuth, if you will, or what is our course that will take us there. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, clear that out, and then we'll just shoot an azimuth, if you will, from Ellington all the way down to Galveston. And we'll go ahead and click it. All right, so here we go. So now we have a path drawn out. And what we see here is we have an azimuth of approximately 143.28 degrees. Now don't get hung up on the 0.28. What I'll do in occasions like this, I'll either round up or round down where appropriate because I like dealing with nice whole numbers. So right here, it looks like we have a heading of 143 degrees. So what does this mean? Well, this means that on the course, in reference to your geographical north pole, your radial or your radius from the geographical north pole is approximately 140 degrees. So, I think this what this will me do is I think this is a good time to talk about your longitude and latitude. Okay, so let me just go ahead and pop that up right there. I think 
I can just do this. Okay, good deal. So here's your longitude and latitude right here. And basically all these lines are is their grids that are superimposed upon your globe to basically give you a coordinate system to better triangulate your position. So let's say for example, and I'll go ahead and zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, and you can see as you get more over the earth, your more predominant lines of longitude and latitude um, start taking effect. So you have your equator right here, then you have your prime meridian over there, and there's Africa, and where the points of where they converge is known as your geographical north pole which is right there that is your point of convergence so when you shoot what's known as your true course what are you doing is you're shooting your radius or your, your um, degrees if you will in relation to your geographical north pole so what does that mean well that means that in relation to your geographical north which is right here and I'll go ahead and align this in relation to your geographical north pole, you're approximately 143 degrees clockwise to your destination. Now I know it sounds kind of confusing and I hope I didn't get you too confused, but this is very important for you to realize. Now if you didn't have a handy tool like Google Earth, another thing you could use is of course your plotter. And that is actually how you plot your true course using your plotter. What you do is you find your lines of longitude and your you find your lines latitude and you will go ahead and align your plotter with whichever you have to so for example I think most plotters are set up to where if you're going up or down or more predominantly south or north then you'll uh, align them with your lines of latitude right here where if you're going more predominantly east or west then you'll align it with your lines of longitude right there but and then you have other plotters that have a spinning circle um, where you can automatically align them with your lines of latitude and then that will give you your uh, course right there but the important thing is once you actually realize where your lines of latitude and longitude lie and how it lies in relation to your true course then you can use pretty much a string and a protractor if you have to so your best plotter that you have is you yourself and a thorough understanding of how you measure your true course in relation to your lines of longitude and your lines of latitude Okay, so that's all the time I have for this video. Uh, when I start with my next video, we'll just go a little bit more deeper into detail on this.